All right, back to some woodworking. What am I gonna do today? Let's make some placemats out of a piece of oak using some epoxy. Before I go into the construction details, let me talk about the dimensions. The placemats are about 15 and a half by 11 and a half inches and roughly a quarter inch thick, but they usually come in at about 200 thousandths after planing and sanding. The wood portion is about four to five inches wide and the black epoxy river in the middle is about two to three inches wide. I dug through my pile of wood and I think I'm gonna use this piece to make some placemats. So I want it to have a live edge river type style in the middle of the placemat. And so what I'm gonna do is this is a pretty thick board that I had rough cut myself out of some uh, trees that fell down around my house. And uh, I'm gonna have to process it a bit to actually get to use it. So let's see what things I wanna do and what I wanna pay attention to. I went ahead and marked this piece off. So it's about five inches because that's what I want uh, to have as my as each side of my piece I'm going to do for my little river and I'll flip it over and mirror it. So I'm going to go ahead and bandsaw this off and then after I do that I can joint it flat on one side and then slice off a whole bunch of thin pieces. So this is some really basic one-on-one -on -one woodworking. I rough cut my piece with a bandsaw. I take it over to the jointer and I face one of the sides. I then joint an edge plane the other edge parallel with my planer. If the piece is wider than my jointer or planer, I will use my router slab jig to flatten the surface. So now I have a squared up piece of stock, but it is really thick. I want the placemats to be about a quarter inch thick. I'm going to resaw them an eighth inch over this thickness to allow some space for cleanup mainly because my resawing setup is pretty janky and the boards were getting a lot of variation in width. After I resaw a piece, I'll replane the main big thick block again to get the side parallel before doing the next piece again. Okay, so I planed these all down. They should have been about 250 thousandths or a quarter of an inch thick, but I suck at resawing and so they were a little extra thin. And after I planed them, they ended up to be about 200 thousandths, so a little bit under, but that should be okay. And next time I'm gonna resaw a little bit wider because I just can't keep it going straight for whatever reason on my bandsaw. So now I need to cut them down to size and then I can drop in my mold and add some epoxy. So let's get to that. All right, so I spent some time kind of arranging these guys and uh, the ways that I thought looked aesthetically pleasing without being too large or too small of a river. And, and uh, that way I kind of lay them out the way I want, make sure it looks good. I don't really care if the incline of the bark is, is going up or down because it's so thin and it's gonna be pretty opaque for the epoxy so you won't really see through it. All right, next is the mold. And I've already used this mold before. It's just melamine, melamine, however you say that. The white stuff, three quarters of an inch thick uh, with the white backing. And uh, it's just part of board, pretty cheap at Home Depot or Lowe's. And I cover it up with tuck tape, tuck tape, or uh, there's another name for this. Um, it's just a slick tape that you can buy at Home Depot. And yeah, you cover it with the tape so the epoxy doesn't stick. I'm gonna go ahead and just screw these pieces together and then the mold is pretty ready. And before I do it, I'm gonna add a little bit of black silicone. And the reason we do this is just to prevent from leaking out of the corners. Uh, I use black because it shows up really easily against uh, lighter colors like white. You can use whatever color you want. So some other notes for the mold. The height of the side pieces really doesn't matter. The important part is the size of the base. I usually pre-drill the pieces too so it doesn't crack. Okay, I have the mold drying and while it's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the corners or the edges here. I'm just gonna sand this a little bit. If it was actually a bigger slab, I would probably use some other tool or rotary 
uh, drill thing to clean it out. But for now, I'm just gonna scrape it a little bit with the brush and sand it a bit so the epoxy sticks to it. I decided to use the drill with a wire brush on it to remove some of the bark and loose material on some of the other pieces that I was working on. All right, epoxy time. What I wanna do is you wanna seal the edges with some quick coat epoxy, or stone coat calls it quick coat. It's just a epoxy that hardens in 15 to 20 minutes. And it's a one-to-one -one part epoxy. I warmed it up a bit in front of a heater here because it's pretty cold where I am right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna seal around the edges here. I'm also gonna seal up just a little bit of bottom and I'm gonna stick it in and kind of glue it down with the epoxy and clamp it with some clamps here. And that way it'll hold in place and get glued down and then I can remove this. And then after that, we can do the color pour. I use a paint mixer to stir up the epoxy and I do it for the required amount of time with a little timer. Thinner portions of epoxy will cure slower. If you leave the epoxy all thick and in the container, it will tend to go off and set too quickly. So I just pour it out and use my fingers to rub it on the pieces. And in addition to rubbing it on the bottom of my hands, later I actually started using a squeegee to wipe or to seal the bottoms and have it be a nice even coat because just mixing with my hands left it too uneven for me. Since I had a bit of leftover epoxy, I went ahead and used it to start filling up some of the voids and the holes in the wood. This wood was pretty uh, spalted and eaten up by bugs, and so I just used some of it to fill it up. It's essential to clamp the pieces down as tightly as you can, and you want to have your little blocks or your clamps uh, with some of the same type of tuck tape to prevent the epoxy from sticking to it and I just try and shove the pieces as far in the corners as I can and get them clamped down as tightly as I can. Okay, so the quick coat, the quick drying epoxy is applied to the edges and kind of sealed down. I can remove the clamps in just a minute. Uh, first, I need to calculate how much epoxy I need to fill up the uh, river portion here. And so it's pretty easy, grab the tape measure. Each of these individual little placemats is about 15 and a half, 16 inches long. And I kind of just average what the river is. This river here is, is about two inches wide. And then the depth, which is about 0 0.220, it's not quite a quarter inch because I planed a little bit more than I should have. So length times width times height equals the volume. So if I'm measuring inches, I get inches cubed. I convert inches cubed into ounces which is a fluid ounce, measure of volume and not weight. And then I know how much epoxy I'm gonna need. So I went ahead and did it. And the average, or not the average, the amount of fluid ounces I think I need is about 18 ounces. So I'm gonna go with that and see how it works. So I know the ounces I need. I'm gonna use the casting epoxy by Stone Coat because it cures a little bit slower, which isn't necessarily what I need. It, clears, it cures really clear. Again, not too important for this bigger application. But what I really want to do is to have a little bit more flexibility so it won't crack if it's moved around. And the casting epoxy is a little bit, a little bit softer than, say, their countertop epoxy. So I'm going to use the casting epoxy uh, for that purpose, to give it the softness. It will also scratch more easily, but that's going to be solved by putting a coat uh, on top of it of either epoxy or a two-part urethane finish, which is what I'm going to do. And let's just, how much, how much color do I add? I don't know. Enough so that it's kind of opaque. So you really don't need a lot. So this is a black onyx. I'm going to Make it a little darker than my previous one. After I mix up the epoxy, I have quite a bit of time 
before I have to pour it because it sets really slowly. So I go ahead and take the clamps off and uh, take off the pieces on top of my mold and then I can begin the pour. I just do a couple of thin pours, pop the bubbles with some uh, torching and pour again and again until it's uh, pretty level. The epoxy will tend to drift towards one side so I kind of just shim it up and use it as a big level to get it kind of pouring into the middle of it. The next day or a couple hours later I'll mix up a little bit more epoxy and start to fill in a little bit of the uh, small holes and voids. So I went ahead and poured a little bit more epoxy over some of the areas that were a little bit low and filled in some of the, the holes. Mold removal is pretty straightforward. I remove the screws and save them for later. And then I use a hammer and kind of just pop off the side pieces. Removing the bottom piece is a little bit trickier and I just pound in some wedges and kind of cut them around like they're a knife and get to separate and pop out of the mold. Once I have the piece out of the mold, I can run it through the planer. I assume the bottom is pretty flat, and so I just plane the top off until it's all pretty smooth. Unfortunately, the spiral cutter head I have in my planer isn't great for epoxy. It tends to leave a lot of little chip out bits, and I have to go ahead and clean it up after I run it through the planer a bunch. I found that regular knives on a regular planer tend to leave a better finish in epoxy. After the epoxy dries, I go ahead and rough sand it using 60 grit. I can then work on cutting them to the final dimensions before I start finish sanding. Before I cut them to final dimensions, I run the edge through the jointer to straighten it up, and then I can drop that edge into my table saw and cut them apart and get some nice straight lines. I rip them all to final width using the jointed edge against the fence. Then I can go on to sanding, and I start sanding it from 60, 80, and I usually stop at 80 and do a little profiling on the router table. The profile is just a, I don't know, quarter inch round over bit, and I do the end grain first to avoid tear out, and after I do both the end grains, I go ahead and do the uh, parallel with the grain. Now my least favorite part, sanding. I hand sand the profile to get it to be a little bit smoother, and then I go ahead and use my random orbital sander to sand through the grits. I started at 60 before, I go 60, 80, 150, 220, and then on the top I will do in just the river 400 and 800 grit, and this smooths out a lot of little imperfections that show up in the epoxy that don't show up in the wood. I'm going to finish the pieces with a conversion varnish. This is a two-part urethane finish which requires a catalyst to make it activate. It gives a short pot life of around 68 hours, but I have found that it is really durable for countertops and placemats. One of the disadvantages is that it has to be sprayed. I'm using a HVLP, a high volume low pressure gun, and it works pretty well for me. I prop the pieces up so they don't stick to my surface and I start spraying. I am going to do three coats in total and after two coats I'll sand it with 400 grit and to get a really good finish it might be nice to sand the third coat with some 600 grit and spray one more coat. So that's pretty much it. The finish takes a while to fully harden but after a week or so you can really put them to use. And I hope you like this video. If you do, like, subscribe, and leave comments. Ask me questions, and I'm happy to help.